Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today we'll be creating SQLize database migration service template. In one of our previous tutorials, we used SQLize migrations inside Next.js project. However, having migrations as a standalone service has its own benefits, such as modularity, deployment, flexibility, its own versioning and history. Make sure to buckle up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future coding tutorials. Without further ado, let's get started. So we are here in a blank project, so let's initialize it. All right, and we created a package.json file. Now, since we have this migration service, we're not going to install any TypeScript or anything. It's going to be using CommonJS. So all we want to install is ESLint and Prettier so the code looks good. Let's go ahead and initialize the ESLint. OK, we'll just do check syntax and find problems. We will do CommonJS. We're not going to use any of the above. We're going to say no to TypeScript. And we're going to say we're going to be running it in the node. And we're going to create it as a JavaScript file. And would you like to install? We we'll click yes. And we're going to be using Yarn. Now let's go ahead and install Prettier. And ESLint config Prettier. ESLint config Prettier will turn off all the ESLint rules. It will conflict with the Prettier. Now let's go to ESLint RC file and update the extents here to include Prettier. And also in our rules, we're going to go ahead and uh, turn off the no undef because there will be a uh, no undef will be used uh, with uh, SQLize migrations. Let's save the ESLint RC file. As you can see, it already make it a little more prettier. And now we're ready to install SQLize. In order to run SQLize migrations, we'll need SQLize CLI. However, we'll need to install also SQLize and MySQL. Now let's go ahead and initialize SQLize CLI. We'll do it with a SQLize CLI init command. And we can see this SQLize CLI created uh, several folders here. Right? If we're going to look at it, so we're going to have our migrations folder that doesn't contain anything. The next thing we have models, right? And there is an index.js file, but mostly we're not going to use models except for if we need to seed. And the next folder that's got created is seeders. Finally, we need to install one more dependencies called envcmd. It will allow us to load environment variables from that env files. Now let's go ahead and create a couple more files, .env and .env.example. In env.example, we put the example variables. And in the env file, we'll put uh, our environment files. Well, for this uh, tutorial, they're going to be the same except for the database port. The database port is going to be 33061. And the reason for that is that I run MySQL off the Docker container. All right, so let's take a look at the Docker container. I have a Docker desktop right here, and I have a MySQL DB container, and I have 33061. 61 port that binds to a regular normal MySQL 3306 port, right? Another thing that we have in the ENV is the test database, right? As a DB name, so we need to create one. I use for that uh, MySQL Workbench. So I already have a connection there. Let me go ahead and click on it. And right here, I'll do right click and create schema and we'll put the schema test database. And then we keep defaults and hit apply. All right, now the database is created. Let's go ahead and save our environment files. The next step will be to create a .gitignore file. Because we need to, we don't want to expose our .env file in the repo as well as the node modules, right? So we can put node modules and .env file right here. And again, save. But what else we need to do is to run uh, git init. So let's go ahead and do it in the command line. Click enter and we initialize the repository. So now you can see that node modules and that env files are ignored. Now let's go ahead and update configuration file with our env variables. However, we have a config JSON, right? We won't be able to import env variables. So what we need to do, we need to rename this file to, con to config.js. Since it's a config.js, right? So now we need to do module exports. Let's go ahead and remove all this 
and then we can paste everything. So it's basically the same thing, except for you using module exports. And you can see there are three environments, development, test, and production. Those are depends on what you put in your .env file uh, in the node underscore env environment, right? So here we have username. We're just importing it from the .env file, right? And dialect will be MySQL. And I'm also renaming the table where migrations are stored to just migrations. Right. And here we have everything the same for all environments. However, right, when we're going to move to production or do some testing, we're going to make uh, certain adjustments. Now let's go to package.json file and create a few migration commands. Right. So right here we have test. We can just delete it and we can paste the migration commands that we're going to be using. Right. So the first one is migration create. So we're going to be wrapping npx CLI command into migration create. Right. The next one will be migrate. That's where we're going to be using NVCMD. And then migrate rollback command will basically roll back the previous migration. And we're also going to be using the NVCMD command to load the environment variables. All right, let's go ahead and create the first migration. We're going to do yarn migration create. And we're going to do name. Uh, we'll call create users table and we hit enter it's going to run sqlize cli command behind the scenes and it's going to create a migration in the migrations folder let's go ahead and take a look at it as you can see the migration file has up and down commands right up is an altering commands down is a reverting command and let's go ahead and update this file to put the code for users table right so now we have up command We'll be creating table users. There will be ID column, which will be allow now false. It's going to be auto increment, and it's going to have a primary key as true, and type will be integer, right? That's going to be our auto incrementing primary key. The first name will define as a string, and we won't allow null as well. However, for the last name, it will be string, and we will allow null. By default, SQLize allow allows nulls. Email again, we're not going to allow now it's going to be string and then we're going to have created it and updated it columns right and then in a down command we'll just drop this table let's go ahead and run migrations command yarn migrate and as you can see migration is successful so let's go to the database and check it so in my sql right if we refresh the schemas and open it right here and we can see the tables we have migration stable created right let's take a look what it created in here so it's basically puts the name of our migration in here so i can keep track of it because next time we're on yarn migrate command it's not going to run this migration anymore it because it already did it in order to update table right you're going to create a new migration where you can change uh, for example type or add more columns right and now we have a users table right here let's uh, also take a look at it and as you can see we have id first name last name email all our columns right here now let's go ahead and test the rollback command all right let's run the command yarn migrate rollback I'm going to run the SQLize CLI behind the scenes again, and it rolled back the migration. So let's go ahead and check it in the database. Let's go ahead and refresh again. And as you can see, we don't have user stable anymore. We only have the migrations table, right? And if we refresh, it's going to be empty. And that covers the basics of creating database migrations with SQLize. In the next video, we will cover a more complex example. So don't forget to like and subscribe. As always, happy coding, and I will see you in the next video.